Hi, this is Catherine, and this is Taking Tea with Catherine. I'm still trying to drink as much green tea as I can, although it doesn't happen every day. But today I'm drinking Trader Joe's When Life Gives You Lemons Add Mint and Ginger Loose Leaf Green Tea Blend. Um, it has peppermint, dried ginger, dried orange slices, dried lemon peel, green tea, natural flavors, whatever that is, and dried sunflower. So kind of tastes healthy, kind of... Tastes good though. Did I just do a pinkies up? So I thought I'd do a little tag. Uh, and I've seen this one rolling around booktube. I don't think I've been tagged in this one, but you know, I always tag myself anyway, cause that's, you know, what we do. And it's Tuesday, so it's a good day to do a tag. And um, I thought I'd do the second tome around book tag that was originally um, conceived by Hungry Bookworm. Great name, by the way. <laughs> For who of us is not a hungry bookworm? But, um, you know, I'm doing pretty well in this whole self-distancing, quarantine, yada yada situation. Uh, besides a few people that I miss seeing in face-to-face -face daily life, though, um, what I miss the most is my browsing bookshops. And, you know, I could live without browsing bookshops for quite some time because I still have so many books in back of me and books I'm going to show you today that I've barely touched. So I'm probably the last person who needs to, but it's still kind of fun to think about the shopping little bit dream. And this is the best way to do it, you know, to reminisce a little bit. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, number one, do you buy secondhand books? Uh, let me think. Yes. <laughs> Love secondhand books. I love new books too, if I can afford them. Um, I love consignment books. I don't always love that they put the little dot in the bottom, but I, I like books in general. I like owning books, and this secondhand books, of course, nowadays can be like even more militant about making sure that they are clean. But either way, secondhand books are a way of getting hold of volumes that maybe aren't new, but sometimes they are relatively new. You can find, you can go to a used bookshop and find something that came out a year ago for really cheap, which is great. <coughs> or if you're like me and you also like a lot of older classic books that have, that were in someone's hands that were old enough to be your grandparent or older, uh, sometimes a nice, a nice, uh, find, you know, in a, an older secondhand bookshop is awesome. And, um, just, great so yes I do <laughs> and number two is what is was your latest purchase and I've shown you guys a lot of my latest purchases so I don't know that I need to show you anything else but I'll just show you a book I don't know if I showed you this one maybe I did um, I wanted the I wanted a lighter version of it but that's okay I um, this author I tend to prefer the paperback which I'm going to get into later, but um, this is Bill Bryson, One Summer America, 1927. And yeah, I think I mentioned this one before, but I had been looking around for it and I saw it in other shops for maybe about $6. So I might have gotten it, but when I saw it in book off for a dollar, yeah. And it's still a good, I mean, let me see when this is copyright, copywritten. Um, goodness sakes, 2013. So it's not a brand new book either way, but still it's a, it's a really great copy. Uh, number three goes right into it. What condition do you find acceptable, i.e. tatty or not tatty, etc.? And of course that depends. So I really like a book to be in some kind of readable shape. I don't like it to be dirty, of course. Uh, when I say dirty, I mean a little bit of dust is one thing, but I mean like food dirt on it, ugh, you know, or I don't want things to be ripped or overly annotated. If someone's notes are in there, if they're interesting, it's okay. But if there's really bad underlining, I get annoyed. So I kind of want it to feel gently used if possible. Like for instance, I read this one recently, and this is a book I've had in my apartment for many, many years. So it's not a used book as far as for me. It's a book that I've used. <laughs> in other words, my sister's used. But like a book like this, if I went into a shop and I was like, I'm really looking for Anne of Avonlea, and I saw this volume, I may hesitate unless I'm desperately wanting to read it because it's a bit beat up. So if it were like 
50 cents, maybe. And if I really, really wanted the title and it was a dollar in New York, that's still very good. But I'd probably look for a better copy first. If that makes sense. After you have read said book, do you keep it for a reread or redonate it? So that doesn't count after I've had a book for a while and realize I'm not going to read it, which I will probably donate. After I've read a book, it depends on how I felt about it. I tend to like to go back to books. Maybe not read them right away or reread them altogether, but I like to refer to books sometimes. And yes, I have access to libraries, usually. <laughs> usually. But um, personally, I... I just like to have my library and I'm a hoarder in that sense, but I've been known to occasionally donate a book that I've read and enjoyed. Just not very often. You know, one, one has to have some kind of weakness and that of course is my only weakness. <laughs> right. So number five, <clears throat> do you have a favorite place you like to go to when looking for secondhand books? Yes, but I have a lot of places that I like when they're open. Let's not get into that again, but cause I live in, I live in New York city. I live in Queens, which doesn't have too many used bookshops. If any, there are some charity, you know, goodwill type shops that are thrift stores. We call them often. And, um, recently, a couple weeks ago, I think I went to one and it had a really bad, I mean, I found like something maybe, but it had a terrible selection. Occasionally you'll find a better one, but I, it's hard to find one in those kind of shops, but, but I do really like some of the used books are that every neighborhood in Manhattan has at least one, maybe not so much. Well, yes, almost every neighborhood has. And if they don't have, you could probably take a decent walk to one. The Strand, for instance, a lot of their books are used. Um, West Sider books is great. Um, there's probably tons that I'm not even thinking about right now. There was one on St. Mark's Place, but I don't think it's, I don't know if it's still there. Uh, Argosy Books is good. Still a bit overpriced now, but still good. But my place now, my go-to, um, where I, when I'm going to my office and working is Book Off because it is a quick, decent, but quick walk from my office building. And so within the space of an hour at lunch, I could find a few really good treasures. Like I said, this book obviously is not an ancient book or whatever, or, or, or even brand new, but for a dollar, this is a really good copy. So, and I found quite a few books like that, that are, that are from, that are from Book Off, that people just brought back, that are in very decent shape. So I totally recommend that place when it is open. <laughs> um, there are other books that are a little, they, they have other books that are used books that are a little more pricey. You know, they could be Twelve dollars, seven fifty, five fifty. But if it's a really good book, then it's worth it. Still, hardback or paperback? Do you have a preference? Mostly paperback, if I can, especially, especially volumes that have come out in the past. I don't know, fifty years, because most of them have really good paperback versions of them. Not always. Some some of them are trash, but a good a good paperback. Like I know this is not a used book, but for example, something like this. You know, I prefer because it's lighter too. And I tend to like to be able to carry on my books when possible. I prefer to something like this. I have Bill Bryson books that are soft cover books and they're just as good. And sometimes I will go to book off and they will have two versions of a book next to each other. And it'll be like, say for instance, this kind of book, they'll have this one and then they'll have a paperback version, both $1. And I might actually select the paperback. So when possible, I will try for the paperback. But I do like the old school, old books that are hardcover. They're, they're really cool. But if I could find those old Penguin paperbacks, you know what I'm talking about, the ones with the um, orange and white, etc. It's really hard to find here. So if I could find that, that would be fantastic. Uh, have you found any real gems? Yes, and this is where I'm going to get a bit chatty because <clears throat> the rest of the prompts I'm not really going to do much about. Um, this is going back because I found quite a few good books that I've shown you guys in my hauls from Book Off, from The Strand, etc. But, and a lot of these books to me are gems. But when, and I've told you guys about this place before, but 
you may be new to the channel and I just like to repeat myself. So around the years between, I don't know about 2006, but definitely 2007 to maybe 2009, the New York Public Library, um, their branch, the Mid-Manhattan branch, which is like two blocks from the main library that everyone pictures when they think of the New York Public Library with the two lions and the steps, uh, which is a great place to visit too. But um, the Mid-Manhattan Library branch had a room <clears throat> on its north side of the block that was just dedicated to used books. The library sale, and it was not a time period like, okay, this is the library sale date. It was just continually going. Pretty much, I think every day between, I think it was between like 11 and 3 or something. So that's probably why I never went after work. And I worked not too far from there. Even still I do, but not as close. Um, but I worked pretty close to there. So I would usually go around lunchtime, around noonish, And I'd find all kinds of fun things between the prices of maybe 50 cents to $2. And great books. I mean excellent books that I still love. Um, it's, I don't know if you could see because it's, it's up there, but there's a lot of those um, every man, no, modern library books. Some of them are a little crumbly now, but yeah, and every man library and all those kind of old things from like the 30s and 40s, paper um, hardbacks, little small volumes, found so many of them. The problem was that apparently, and I've heard this complained about with current um, um, library sales too, but it was it was, I guess, a big problem because I, I read an article about it and I think this is one of the main reasons they closed it, um, was that at 11 o'clock, apparently there would be book dealers that would show up and as soon as place went in, they would go and just get a stack of books. And most people wouldn't get there at opening time, so by the time you got there, maybe the pickings were a little slimmer. Thankfully, I did find a lot of stuff there still. But I gotta say, they ruined it for everybody because they were going the the near public library was probably buying like like a lot of used book stores they were going to like estates etc and just buying a bunch of stuff and they were selling it dirt cheap to make money from the library which is a good thing and these people were just buying up a whole load of stuff and reselling it for a profit and i know that you could say oh that's their job but is it you know what i mean so <laughs> So it was kind of it was kind of a thing that became a turnoff for the New York Public Library, and I think that's one of the main reasons they discontinued it. There could have been other reasons that I don't know about political, or maybe they needed the real estate for something else. You know, it's very valuable nowadays. But it was heartbreaking going there and seeing that it was over. I mean, not like my life was over, but it was sad, you know. And thankfully, we found places like Book Off to to fill the void, but. Nevertheless, I will show you some things I found there. Most of the books tend to be blue colored. I don't know why, but um, I know I get into Helene Hanf a lot on this channel. And when she says um, that she likes um, used books a lot and how she thought, that, you know, the person that read the book before her was like her comrade, her friend, you know, it was like a person who shared the story with her. And... I know she was into Sir Arthur Quiller Couch. That was one of her main influences for literature. So when I found the Oxford Book of English Verse in this in this container and everything, um, which he selected and commented on, and um, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have taken it out. I'll put it back later. And the Oxford Book of Victorian Verse, which is also fantastic. I had a bookmark in here. I wonder what I was bookmarking, but it got dented. I don't even know. But it's great. These were like, uh, well, this may, this one may not have been, this may not have been from, this may have been from, uh, Argosy because I think it costs slightly more, but this one was definitely from, <laughs> this one was definitely from that, from that library sale. I could tell because it has the two. I could tell by the, the handwriting of the two. <laughs> and, um, then I found, am I going off the camera? No. I found a bunch of these things. I've always liked Peep's Diary, and this is not the complete set. set. It doesn't get into like 1666, the whole plague, ugh, um, fire time period, but it goes into the early 1660s, the restoration period, Charles II, which I always thought was an interesting time to read about. So I have two volumes, which is great, a little heavy, but still pretty cool. I'd like to find the rest of them. Will I? We'll see. Uh... Uh, I, here's an Anthony Trollope, one among many that I found in, and also I had other classics too, Oxford World, Penguin Classics, etc. But 
but these are just old ones so that's kind of cool uh yellow's angel by anthony trollope and um yeah this was two dollars which isn't so bad you know nice cute volume and uh this one sketches by boz oxford india paper dickens right is this i think there was a whole set of these and it's a little messed up in the back but the front is really cool and this one was cool to me because okay it was two dollars but then it also says 60p so that's where it came from originally apparently the uk which i love so i have to i really have to read this <laughs> had it long enough right and um let's see Oh yeah, this one I found, which is another TBR. Goodness sakes, my TBR is ancient. But it's the Raj Quartet, which I think costs about $2 in total that I found there. The Raj Quartet by Paul Scott, which I've heard good things about. So, yeah, nice box set, you know? And so that's, the, that's what I found among many things. So some gems, you know, from the New York Public Library sales in the ancient times. And um, this was before Argosy... Um, um, on 59, 58th Street, 59th Street. Anyway, um, 59th Street, I think, uh, in Manhattan, before they changed their entrance, their bookshelves and the and covered entrance way to um, three dollars each. Thanks. I, that's minimal. It used to be a whole set of shelves for a dollar each, which was great. So I got to get to the very end of that last year, and um, I got it. I showed you these already during. I think October, a bunch of Stevenson books for a dollar each. So that's fantastic. So yeah, I, you can, if you know where to look and if you're willing to spend the time amongst dusty, musty books, then uh, not that all of them are dusty, but you know, they can be. Then it's worth, it's it's like a hunt. When I say hunt, I know I'm, I don't hunt, but you know, the, the feeling of finding something that you've almost lay and wait for for a while and you find a treasure, okay, a treasure hunt, more like. And um, yeah, again, I don't need any more books right now. I am stocked. I, I could probably, if, if, if all I had to worry about was what to read between all this time being in, you know, self-isolation, quarantine, whatever it is, I would be pretty much set. But, but, uh, but it's always nice to know, you know, you could have access to them. So here's to the future, maybe. Um, optional uh, prompt is to find a book from your shelves that you can donate to a good cause or your local charity goodwill shops which i can't really do right now so maybe in the future and to tag some other people um if because i know quite a few people have already done this tag so if you haven't and you think this would be a fun tag to do then go ahead and do it tell them Catherine sent you <laughs> oh no <laughs> so uh this has been Catherine at taking tea with Catherine. hope you've enjoyed let me know if you guys have uh any comments on these books or these questions if you didn't feel like doing the actual uh tag itself uh yeah i hope you guys are doing well and this is uh i hope you have a lovely whatever filled day that you want but tea and books always good bye